Thank you, Texas. God bless the Lone Star State. And God bless the great state of Oklahoma. In 324 days, Marine One will depart Washington, D.C. with a very important dignitary on board, former President Barack Obama. This much is certain, January 20th, 2017, will be President Obama's last day in office. And on that day, we will have a new President of the United States. Tonight, tonight this campaign enters a new phase. We began with 17 Republican candidates. Through the first four states, the race narrowed considerably. Tonight was another decision point, and the voters have spoken. Tomorrow morning, we have a choice. So long as the field remains divided, Donald Trump's path to the nomination remains more likely. And that would be a disaster for Republicans, for conservatives, and for the nation. And after tonight, we have seen that our campaign is the only campaign that has beaten, that can beat, and that will beat Donald Trump. I congratulate Donald Trump on his victories tonight. But we are the only campaign that has beaten Donald Trump once, twice, three times. Fifteen states have now voted. Every one of those states so far has been won by either Donald Trump or myself. <laughs> Republicans, together we have a choice. We are blessed with a deep, talented, honorable field. For the candidates who have not yet won a state, who have not racked up significant delegates, I ask you to prayerfully consider our coming together, uniting. For those who have supported other candidates, we welcome you on our team standing united as one. That is the only way to beat Donald Trump. Head to head, our campaign beats Donald Trump resoundingly. But for that to happen, we must come together. And to Republican primary voters in upcoming states, you too have a choice. In our nation's darkest hours, FDR told us that we have nothing to fear but fear itself. JFK told us to ask not what our country could do for us, but to ask what we could do for our country. America shouldn't have a president whose words would make you embarrassed if your children repeated them.
Our president should make us all proud, should inspire hope in all of us. We can nominate a Washington deal maker, profane and vulgar, who has a lifelong pattern of using government power for personal gain. Or we can nominate a proven conservative who has fought consistently for working men and women and to defend the Constitution. I will stand with the people of this country and end corporate welfare. Adopt a flat tax and abolish the IRS. Donald Trump funded the Gang of Eight. With your help, I led the successful opposition to the Gang of Eight's amnesty plan. <laughs> Donald Trump supports Planned Parenthood. I will direct the Justice Department to investigate Planned Parenthood. Donald Trump promises to compromise with Harry Reid and Chuck Schumer on Supreme Court nominees. I will never compromise away our religious liberty. And unlike Donald Trump, I will never compromise away our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Donald Trump pledges to be neutral between Israel and the Palestinians. As president, I will not be neutral. America will stand unapologetically with the nation of Israel. Donald Trump says he will keep in place the Iranian nuclear deal to try to renegotiate it. I will rip to shreds this catastrophic Iranian nuclear deal on the very first day in office. If you're angry with Washington, I understand. But Donald Trump has been part of the Washington corruption for 40 years. He's Harry Reid's favorite Republican candidate. And Jimmy Carter's. Just yesterday, it was reported that the New York Times has a secret tape recording of Donald saying that he doesn't mean what he's saying on immigration. That it's all flexible, that he won't build a wall, that he won't deport illegal aliens. But Donald refuses to allow them to release the tape. Donald, release the tape. If you're telling the New York Times editorial board that you're lying to the voters, the voters have a right to know. Enough with the Washington corruption, with the deception, with using government to benefit the rich and powerful at the expense of the American people. Five years ago, I promised the people of Texas that I would fight with every breath in my body to stop Obamacare. To stop amnesty and to secure the border to stop the debt that is bankrupting our kids and grandkids, to defend religious liberty, the Second Amendment, and the Bill of Rights. And 
and I have kept my promise. That's why we were supported in this election by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. By Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, our campaign chairman. By former Governor Rick Perry, a true patriot. By nearly half of the Republican state legislators in Texas. And by thousands upon thousands of Republican women and grassroots activists. They know my record. They know me personally. They know my heart. And they know that I have kept my word to fight for them each and every day. America, I'll do the same as president. Together, we will repeal Obamacare. Abolish the IRS. Pull back the EPA regulators that are killing small businesses. Stop amnesty and secure the borders. And the result will be small businesses exploding, millions of high paying jobs, wages going up, and young people coming out of school with two, three, four, five job offers. From this day forward, let us together show that Reagan's love, optimism, and faith in the American people were not misplaced. Let us show that we will not let the American light go out, that we will fight for our Constitution, for life, and for freedom. You have shown that we remain a strong and just people, a people who do not give in to fear, but rise always in our righteous might to meet the challenges of the future. Together, we can do it. If we stand together and return to the free market principles and the constitutional liberties that built America. Once again, we can have morning in America. Thank you and God bless each and every one of you.